Well, hello again. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, and today we are going to be talking out of opting out of Google-based interest ads. So if you've been following me for a little while, you guys know, like last week or a little while ago, I screamed and I ranted and I raved about Facebook's insanity, and I ended up uh, deleting all of my Facebook accounts and all of that kind of stuff because I decided I would not be under the heel of Facebook anymore. Now, one of the things that comes up, of course, is you know, you know, if I'm ranting about Facebook, then what do I think about Twitter and LinkedIn and Google and all that? And as, as I've said, basically, I think Twitter is kind of, you know, the, uh, the special... <laughs> <laughs> the special sibling of the social group, so I'm not too worried about them. LinkedIn, I basically know how they make money, so I'm not too worried about that. And then it goes to Google. So so what am I going to do about Google? What are we going to do about Google? And the, the issue with Google is, for me, for me, is I can't really leave Google. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of this, this entire business, this entire business runs off of YouTube. It runs off of Google services, so... You know, it's kind of like, you know, the, the, the demon that I, that I already made the agreement with. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of stuck with Google. But just because I'm stuck with Google doesn't mean that I have to get inundated with the, uh, the directed ads um, that Google tries to send to you. So with Google, uh, you know, back in the old days, back when I appreciated them a lot more, uh, if you went to a website or if you do a, did a Google search, you would be given ads basically kind of a little bit willy-nilly. There might have been a little direction in there uh, but it was it was basically you just go to a website and, and ads show up so if it was a tech website and tech ads would show up if it was a beauty website beauty ads would show up the problem that I'm running into nowadays with Google is I go to a tech website and like home improvement ads are showing up or if I go to a vacation website like computer ads are showing up and you don't realize how horrible targeted ads are until you realize how horrible they are. And so there's like this problem. Like so, so especially with me uh, working out of my house and working on my own, I kind of multitask a lot. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like so, one minute I'm working on the show, the next minute I'm thinking about taking a vacation, the next minute I'm thinking about redoing the kitchen. And so one of the things you don't really realize is how valuable ads actually are to you because when you see advertisements. Uh, and when you go to certain websites, if the advertisements relate to the products or services on the website, then they may be something that you're interested in. So if I go to a computer website and I see a special for Newegg or I see a data recovery piece of software, I see something like that, that may be actually valuable to me. Whereas if I go to a computer repair uh, website and I see... Um, I don't know, uh, I see something for, for, for you know taking a vacation in Paris, that isn't that useful to me. So what I was interested in is being able to shut off that interest-based advertising. Basically, when I go through the Google's verse, I want to be as low profile as possible, just basically to make my life easier and a little bit of the whole anonymous thing. So this is relatively easy to do, but again, with all of these social networking sites, they make things kind of screwy. So I kind of wanted to take you through this process today so you guys could actually see what's going on. So if we go over to a, the, my computer, I can kind of show you here. So if you're trying to figure out how to app, opt out of the Google Ads, literally you can just plug into Google, opt out of Google Ads, and you'll get this page here. The first thing that shows up is opt out hyphen ads help hyphen whatever. And you click out here. And it'll tell you basically how to go through the process of opting out. But there, again, with all of this stuff, there's little tips and there's little tricks and there's stupid little things that they just throw in there to piss you off. So if you go down here, what you're going to see is it's going to say, you know, how to opt out. And it says ads on Google. And then it says Google ads across the web. And it gives you a link. And we're going to go to that in a second. And I can show you how to do with that. But the thing that they don't really point out, what they don't really point out is down here at the bottom, they have all these fact things, right? And so they, they have the question, does it stop ads altogether? Of course not. Um, disable other companies' interest-based ads. So basically, one thing to realize with these interest-based ads is these are only for AdSense or for AdWords. So if it's from another company, it's not going to do anything. And then they go down here, you know, app data, clear browsers, all that kind of stuff. But the interesting thing is this one thing that they bury right here in the middle. And again, this is one of those things that I honestly would not have even thought about. Because you think about Google, and they have Google Plus, and they have all these profile settings, and they have a zillion ways to track you. So if you think you're, if you 
think you're just going to, it seems like you should just be able to opt out of ads at one time and then it should cover everything because Google knows so much information about you. But the interesting thing is it says, do you, do you use a few different browsers on your computer? Even if you opt out of interest-based ads on, by Google on one browser like Chrome, you may still see interest-based ads by Google on the other browsers. So the most ridiculous piece of crap here in order to make this actually work is literally in order to opt out of interest-based ads, you have to open up the browser, every browser on every computer or device that you use and opt out. So again, if I use Google Chrome on my computer most of the time, but then I use Safari every once in a while, if I opt out using Google Chrome, Safari will still see the ads. If I, if I opt out using my laptop computer, and then I go down and use my tablet computer, I may still be seeing interest ads there. So this is, this, this, seriously guys, this is what pisses me off about this whole modern world of social networking and these monopolistic companies, is you know that it doesn't have to be this way. They, they could make it so you can opt out once and be done with it. Instead, they screw with you and screw with you and screw with you and screw with you and screw with you, and, with you. and there you go. Thankfully for me, I could get rid of Facebook. That was one thing. Like Facebook, I, I felt was screwing with me so I could get, get rid of them. Unfortunately for me, like Google and YouTube and all that, I'm kind of stuck with for, an, for, for a while. But I will say, anybody who works for, at Google, this kind of horse crap right here is why getting away from even Google is on my radar. But anyways, if you want to get out of the opt-out ads, uh, again, like I say, they have the links up here. It goes, go to ad settings at google.com settings ads. If we click on that link, that will bring us here, and this will show us the ad settings. So these are the things that Google knows about us. So one thing we'll see here is we have ads on Google, and then we say Google ads across the web. So ads on Google are, are ads that show up on search or Gmail or YouTube or Maps or any of the Google platforms. Uh, ads across the web, these are for ads that show up on any websites that use AdWords. So Eli the Computer Guy used to use AdWords, uh, CNET, anything like that. So basically websites that use AdWords but are not specific to Google. So we go down here, we can also start seeing what Google thinks it knows about us. So for me, for gender, it says it thinks I am male because I have plugged that into my Google profile, my Google Plus profile. And so ads across the web thinks the same thing. Age, it thinks I'm 35 to 44 because of my profile. Across the web, it seems, seems the same thing. Uh, for ads on Google, for languages, it thinks, it doesn't know, it's not applicable right now. Now here's the weird thing, and this is a screwy thing with all these ads. Somehow, Google ads across the web, literally, I didn't screw with this, this is literally organic. Somehow, it thinks I'm Spanish. And again, this is one of my issues with all of this stuff, is if it was actually accurate, it wouldn't be so bad, but it's, oh, it's so horrible. And then we come down here to interests for ads on Google. For right now, it says unknown. But if we go over to ads across the web, this is how we can see what kind of ads uh, they're going to be targeting towards us. So if we go here, it says calendar and scheduling software, law and government, microblogging, news, parenting, shopping, smartphone, sports. I don't care anything about sports. I don't really care anything about parenting. So these are the kind of ads that they're going to try to push us towards. So you see that's there. So, you know, you can go in. You can actually X out these things if you don't want it. So uh, if I say I don't care about movies, I could actually just X out that one thing and it will stop trying to show me ads about movies. Advertisers campaigns you've blocked. So you can actually block individual uh, campaigns if you want to. But again, I would say don't even worry about all of that. You can come down here to these opt out settings. So opt out basically says when you see ads that they shouldn't be targeted towards you, that they should just be the generic ads that show up on Google. So I can opt out of this uh, and it says what it means to opt out you will still see ads you'll no longer be able to block specific advertisers ads won't that th and this is what I this is what I like and this is what I would prefer ads won't be based on your interest and may appear in another language well I'm not sure about the language thing but you know, blah, 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 blah. And then we do the opt out here. The important thing to understand, that's just for Google's world. And then we have to go here to the interest based on Google ads from across the web and also opt out there. And now we have officially opted out of this web browser 
on this computer and now I just have to do this about 50 more times and away we go. So the, the, these are, this, this is how you opt out of those interest-based ads. I don't know how important that is to you. Again, I, I don't mind ads on the web. That's, that's the whole thing. Again, I get paid for, from ad advertisement. I get paid for my sponsors. I get paid for from YouTube and all that. The problem that I find uh, with all of these directed ads, like I say, from Google, though, is that they're just giving me a bunch of crap. It really is funny. Like, I will... Like, I've already purchased items from company. I, I, like, I'm dealing with a construction company right now, and it's the weirdest thing in the world because I've already signed the contracts with a construction company. I'm uh, right or wrong, I'm already freaking handcuffed to these bastards, at least for the next few months. But every time I go to a web page, I'm still getting ads for this construction company. And it's completely worthless. I already know the construction company exists. I've already actually hired the construction company. Why am I still seeing all of these ads? And that's where it's just like, oh. As far as anonymity is concerned, being anonymous and all that, because I know that's what you guys are really worried about, is will this make us anonymous? No. <laughs> You're not anonymous. You are not. You are not anonymous when you are on the internet. Again, as I will say, again and again and again and again and again and again and again. If you are on the internet, you are not anonymous. Everybody can see you. But at least with this, you can opt out of at least the targeted ads, and maybe the ads may end up actually being more relevant to you. I would say. That's my thought. That's my thought. So that is that is how you opt out of the Google targeted ads. I think it's a pretty useful thing, I, I would say. Plixer.com. Plixer deals with NetFlow analytics software. So NetFlow is a component of Cisco equipment that shows you what's going on at the network layer, what devices are talking to what other devices, what kind of network jitter, all of that kind of stuff. So Plixer has a free piece of software called Scrutinizer. Scrutinizer is a free NetFlow network traffic analysis tool. So if you want to play around with NetFlow, if you want to see what's going on with the network layer and you have Cisco equipment, take a look at Plixer.com. Click on the link below this video. It'll bring you to this page where you can download Scrutinizer, the free NetFlow network traffic analysis tool. AdAccess.com. If you're dealing with Active Directory on a large scale, so you have hundreds of users to add, hundreds of users to disable, so on and so forth, you may want to take a look at AdAccess.com. This is Active Directory management and automation software. So this tries to automate and simplify the Active Directory workflow. So if you are in a large scale Active Directory infrastructure, take a look at AdAccess.com. NerdsWeCanFixThat.com. If you're thinking about starting your own computer services company, but you don't want to have to worry about coming up with a logo and copyright and trademark and all of those kinds of things, you may think about buying into a computer services franchise system. NerdsWeCanFixThat is a computer services franchise system. They have 62 franchises throughout the United States. They can franchise in every state other than Hawaii. They also franchise internationally. If you're thinking about starting your own computer services company, you should contact them, fill out the information below, or give them a call. Again, as I will say, franchise systems are great for a lot of people, not so good good for others. Always make sure to do your due diligence, but if you're thinking about starting a computer services company anyway, you might as well contact Nerds We Can Fix That to see what they have to say. Veeam.com, V-E-E-A-M.com. If you just virtualized 100 servers and now you're trying to figure out how to back them up, they have solutions for ESXi, they have solutions for Hyper-V, and as you guys like, they have free stuff. So if you are dealing with a virtualized environment and you're trying to figure out a backup solution, take a look at Veeam.com. Total Seminars, totalsim.com. If you're looking for your A+, plus, your Net+, plus, your Security Plus certification, they have video training, practice tests, exam vouchers, and more. If you are on the CompTIA track and you are looking for study prep material, study guides, that type of thing, take a look at Total Seminars, totalsim.com, T-O-T-A-L-S-E-M.com. Spiceworks.com. These guys have the free network management software, the free mobile device management software, the free community with millions of users. So if you need, if you're an IT professional and you need support, Spiceworks is a great place to go. All of their stuff is basically free and just an absolutely great thing. Again, if you have any questions that I don't answer in the show that are technical in nature, you know, we're talking about Active Directory synchronization between sites in remote areas. Uh, if you click on the link below this video, 
video that will take you to the Spiceworks community. They have millions of users there that will be able to help you out. So take a look at Spiceworks.com. Altero.com, A-L-T-A-R-O.com. If you are dealing with virtualization in a Hyper-V environment, so we're talking about Windows Server 2008 R2, 2012, and 2012 R2, take a look at Altero.com. They have a number of Hyper-V backup solutions. They have the free version, which will back up up to two VMs for free forever. They also have the unlimited version, starting at only $400 per host. I think this is a very good value. So if you are dealing with Hyper-V virtualization and you need a backup solution, take a look at altero.com. So this question comes from Ivan A. I was thinking a bit and I'm wondering if game mods shine on the programming portfolio. By game mods, I mean anything from new items in the game to unofficial patches. For example, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. That game stopped being supported by the company who created it, so the community created an unofficial patch for it. That patch fixes some bugs the creators didn't fix. Does something like that shine on the resume or do employers only want to see entire programs uh, created by me? Basically, I I would say that that's probably a pretty good thing to put on your resume. Though that what I will say, I will caveat with this, is that you should focus on projects that most closely resemble to whatever work you want to get. So if you want to do game development, game mods is awesome. If you want to do like real time communication development, game mods, yeah, and they're not bad. Uh, they may not be the greatest thing in the world, right? So when I talk to the CEOs out there, when I talk with the tech recruiters, all that kind of thing, basically they want to see that you have motivation. The big thing that they want to see is that you find problems, you figure out solutions to problems, and then you implement those solutions to pro problems in a programmic way. Way. Then beyond that, obviously, they want to see that you have whatever programming languages they need, but that's the big thing. that You go out there, you find a problem that you want to solve, and that you actually solve it. Now then past that, so that's the big thing that they want to see, but then past that, you do get into the different niches within programming. So there's database programming, there's mobile programming, there's real-time communication programming, so on and so forth. So if you want to get into like the enterprise world and program uh, for the Microsoft stack then target the Microsoft stack if you if you kind of get what I'm saying so it's definitely it is definitely not a bad thing to do it's definitely not a bad thing to do really the only question comes down to is what niche are you really targeting uh, and whether whether that niche really care, cares about gaming so so yeah it's 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 it's, it's pretty good I would say it's a good thing um, overall though realistically I have to say, really, honestly, talking to these guys, talking to CEOs and all that, they love mobile apps. I don't know why it is. It's, it, it's wacky as hell. But they love mobile apps. Time and time and time again, they say, if they can go and they see that you have apps that are in the iOS store, the Apple store, or on Google Play, they just think that's the coolest thing since sliced bread. So what I would say is game mods definitely isn't bad. How good it is depends on whether you want to do a, go into game programming or not. But really, honestly, at the, day, at the end of the day, if I was a young buck like you guys, I would be out there trying to do app development for the mobile sphere. Because right or wrong, that seems to be the thing that's the most popular right now. <laughs> Oh, oh my golly. So this is one of those questions that I will, I will share for what you don't ask me because I don't know what the hell to do with this. Hello, Eli. I need your help. I am working on one project right now that is a state prison. 20,000 square meters. The complex of the prison has nine separate objects. I can send you the 3D render if you are interested to help me so that we can talk more precisely. Right now, I need your help on IP video surveillance, but in the future, not on this project right now, I'm going to need your help with computer networks and IP telephones and L2 and L3 switches, but just the basics and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't help you with it. Guys, guys, I, I know you guys think I'm like so amazing and everything sometimes, but there are questions that are too big, even for the new version of the Daily Blob show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I have time to research answers for this new version of Daily Blob, but I don't have time to figure out 
crap for a 20,000 square meter facility. So the one thing that I will tell you guys, and th this is the biggest problem with people trying to get into technology projects, is before you even get into these technology projects, you need to find resources uh, in your area to help you that will be able to help you do these projects. Again, even when I had my, my computer repair shop, we for a long time, we outsourced Mac repair. We outsourced some of the cabling. We outsourced some web development. We outsourced a lot of things. And we came up with those relationships so that we could do the job. You would come to Eli the computer guy and the work would be finished and you would pay Eli the computer guy. You didn't have to realize there were all these little subcontractors in the background. So one of the biggest things, if you're gonna be starting a consulting firm of any kind, even if it's just you in your, in your bedroom, go out there and start creating relationships with other tech vendors so that when you get projects in, you can basically own the project but then subcontract out all the work. Like if you're gonna be going in to let's say a, a, some kind of facility, uh, you go out and you find a subcontractor for cabling. You find a subcontractor for actually setting up like the system itself. You find a subcontractor for this, and then you simply do the work uh, that, 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 that you can do. Again, when I see stuff like this, I mean, I don't even know what the hell to tell you. Dude, a 20,000 square meter facility, uh, a prison, that's a big job. And I, I might take the work or I might have taken in the past, but it's gonna cost you a lot of money. Again, that's one thing to, for you guys to realize is this tech field is really freaking expensive. If you want me to help you on a facility like this, I, I don't see where you're offering me a minimum of $30,000. Where in here, where in this question does it say, and we are offering, you know, like I say, your rate of 250 or more dollars an hour. I just, I don't see it anywhere. So that's, that is what I would say with this is just go out there, find local subcontractors uh, that you know how to do with and deal with them. The other thing is whenever you take these projects, make sure you know what subcontractors cost and what the budget is. Because again, I, I'm not, I'm not even joking. I mean, I mean, I would cost a lot of money for I'm not like 30,000. I don't know if I'd be $30,000. If you were going to contract me to support you in this project, it would be at least $10,000. And that's just for my brain power. That's not for like the cable. That's not for the cameras. That's not for me to do the project. That is me coming in as a consultant. So uh, that's just kind of one of those things to keep in mind. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. As I say, there are just some things I, I really can't help you guys with. So this question is from Jason C. I know you're a busy person, but I have a question about Windows Server 2012 using a virtual machine. When adding a user to the server, I get an error like this two pictures showing at the bottom. Hopefully you can see this picture and respond to this email or through YouTube. So basically this guy is running a Windows Server 2012. Apparently he's running it into a virtual environment and when he goes to add a user, he's having some problems. So it's like, huh, kind of scratching my head I, I wonder I wonder what problem he has so he sent me these two pictures and we can go over to the computer right now to, to show you the pictures so this is the first picture he shows me and uh, so join a domain or work group so apparently uh, he has this domain of etcg.com, jason-pc, an Active Directory domain controller for the domain, etcg.com, could not be contacted. Ensure that the domain name is typed correctly, blah, blah, blah. So the first thing that I'm thinking, when you see something like this, when you're trying to join a computer to the domain, and you get an error like this, it's almost always a networking error, as in there's a problem with something like the IP address or the DNS. So as soon as I see this, I know either DNS is not resolving properly or DHCP isn't working properly, something of the sort. So this is the error message. And basically the next picture is where he scrolls down on the error message, right? And so when you scroll down on the error message, the DNS servers used by this computer for name resolution are not responding. This computer is configured to use DNS servers with the following IP addresses. And Will Robinson, we found the problem. I have no idea what the hell IP addresses these are. 
1.214.68.2 and 61.41.153.2. Those DNS servers right there don't make a darn bit of sense. I've never seen a one dot anything. Can there even be a one dot anything? I actually would have to do some more research to find out if there could not be a one dot anything. So the problem that this guy is having right now is that he has screwed up his DNS to high hell and back. Most likely on the DHCP server, he screwed up and he put something wrong into the DHCP server so that when this computer grabs an IP address, it is getting this mess back. So basically the problem right here is that he's having DNS problems and he needs to fix the DNS problem. So the primary DNS server uh, for a Windows Windows Active Directory domain needs to be the Windows Active Directory DNS server. So when you set up Windows Active Directory, you can also set up DNS and DHCP running off of Windows Active Directory servers. Let me tell you, unless you're a very smart person and you want to go through a lot of troubleshooting, that's what you want to do. Theoretically, you can run Linux, DHCP, and DNS servers or off of your router, but it's a real pain in the ass. Microsoft Active Directory doesn't like it. Microsoft Active Directory basically wants to control all of these networking servers services and as I would say if you don't like it then buy something else but that's what what uh, what Microsoft wants so for this primary DNS server at the minimum the primary DNS server needs to be your the the DNS the Windows DNS server that you have up and running preferably the secondary DNS server should be a backup DNS server on your network but if not um, this can be you know the the uh, the um, the router or something like that. But basically, if nothing else, this first primary DNS server needs to be the Windows DNS server for the network, and then you'll resolve the problems because that's that's the issue that, that, that this guy is having right now. So the big thing to remember, again, whenever you're dealing with, with the whole Windows world, especially with Active Directory, is Microsoft should basically own everything. Microsoft, there should be a Microsoft DNS server, there should be a Microsoft DHCP server, there should be a Microsoft Microsoft Active Directory server. Again, I know there's some people out there that are like, no, Eli, no, you can do it differently. And it's like, yeah, if you really want to waste your time. But DNS and DHCP already comes as part of the Windows Server package. And you know what I'm saying. Like, if you've already made the deal with the Microsoft devil. Just, just use DNS and DHCP off of that. But always, this is a big problem that I see re really seriously having like junior level admins is remember every single configuration you put into the server you have to make sure is correct. And so you see this time and time and time and time again where somebody is configuring the DHCP scopes um, and for some reason they just screw up. So they screw up the scope, uh, they screw up the DNS servers, they screw up something like that and then that goes out to all the client computers and just crashes the entire network. Or with this, if this guy has the static DNS server, the static IP address is plugged in, he just screwed up the static IP address uh, or the static DNS setting, which again, you see time and time and time. I'm again. So, uh, so yeah, that's all it is. Make sure your, D your, your DNS settings are correct when you're using Microsoft Active Directory or everything will go to hell. Oh, bugger, 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 bugger. So the final thoughts for the day, the final thoughts for the day. I guess the final thoughts for the day is, is how people are dealing with this new change in the Daily Blob Show, the change to the pre-recorded Daily Blob Shows. And I have to say, I have to say for my part, um, I like these a lot better. <laughs> I like these a lot better for a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons. Again, because I can do a little bit of research beforehand. I can make sure I know what I'm thinking before I say all that kind of stuff, uh, so on and so forth. I think the daily blobs are good. But I know, I know some people out there absolutely hate them. I've seen criticism. I've seen a lot of criticism. It seems like 50% of the people that offer criticism say they like the new 30 or 40 minute shows. And then a lot of people are saying that they stink. But what I'm gonna tell you in life, again, the, the reason that I'm here, the reason I've done all these videos, whether they've been daily blobs, or they've been classes, whether they've been points to ponder, or any of the other things that I've done, is one of the things I'm trying to do here is teach you how the real business works, how, how the real world works when it comes to money. And so one of the things that you guys just have to realize is people are gonna complain about anything that you do. No matter, no matter what you do to try to make things better, people are going to complain. And so again, this is why I try to hammer into your guys' heads the whole idea that you need to think 
about what you're going to do. You need to know why you are doing what you are going to do. Because no matter what you do, even if you try to improve things, you will face the repercussions of people will hate you for what you're doing. Again, like I say, with, with what I'm doing now, you know, I've got this daily blob, I've got Geek Brain Dump that is just taking off. I have the Geek Brain Dump meetup that's doing wonderful things. And so one of the reasons I'm cutting back on the daily blob is because I'm doing all these other things that are good for the world, good for humanity, and yet people are still complaining so I don't know what to tell people the one thing that I will say I, I got one person our Belgian I just laughed at the Belgian the Belgian because I'm just like what the hell is wrong with you dude because I got this one message yesterday that said I didn't even get to the sponsor part I can't stand the new daily blob and just so you guys understand this, like, the beginning of the show is basically the same as it's always been. The only difference is I edit it down a little bit, so you don't have to sit there watching as my phone updates or whatever. But literally, I did an unboxing of the Samsung Gear Live, and it was essentially the same thing that I always do, only, again, I, I literally chopped out just the time-wasting bits and put it together. And this person couldn't stand the new version. And it's like, um... You know, you know, I don't think you gave it a chance. I, I think it's like people who say they can't stand sushi. It's like, I, I don't think you actually tried the sushi. Why don't you try the sushi before you, you start complaining about how horrible it is? So, so there you go. Again, as far as the Belgian is concerned, I'm sorry. I mean, everybody knows where the little X mark is to go bye-bye. But this is, I think this is going to be better for the future. It's going to be better for my sanity. Again, um, as I've said before, uh, having done the Daily Blob now for six months, I don't, I, don't like, I don't like the relationship you guys think that we have. Because we don't. Like, again, I, I, I saw a lot of people get snarky about that thing where I said, I don't really care if some of you get hit by a bus. I really don't care probably if any of you get hit by a bus. And the reason is because I don't know any of you guys. 345,000 subscribers. And I don't. I know like two of you. I would be sad if Big Nate 84 got hit by a bus. And I would be sad if Null Set got hit by a bus. But those are like the only folks I know, right? Um, and so like people were all like, ah, about that. And so, like I say, with the daily blobs, one of the reasons I'm shutting down the live blobs is because I really do want to shut down this whole thing where people think that, that we have a relationship. Because we don't. If you want to have a relationship with somebody, please, Chris Prillo would love to have you. You know what I'm saying? I, Justine, would love to have you. There are a lot of people out there that really want to be like famous and they really want love and adoration. Um, I don't. I just want to be a geek and I want to play around with cool stuff and then I want to speak into a video camera every once in a while and go, hey, look at this cool thing I found. Guess how much money you can make trying to sell it. Uh, that's what I want to do. I don't, I don't want to get all personal. I don't want to get into arguments. I don't want to get all snarky and nasty and all that kind of stuff. I just want to be a geek, is what I'm going to say. So, um, so yeah, so those are the kind of the final thoughts for the day. Again, like I say, I, I like these new daily blobs. I, like, uh, I just like the production of it. Um, I like how I can think about things. I like the quality. I, I, need to, I need to work on the editing. Obviously, yesterday was the first time we did this. Um, but overall, I think this is just a great way to go. So there we go. That is the final thoughts for the day. Again, remember some, what you have to remember in business is no matter what you do, you are going to irritate people. It's just how it is. Just how it is. No matter what you do, you're going to lose customers. You're going to lose clients. You're going to use, lose support. So make sure, and that's the important thing, before you make any decisions, decisions really know why you're making the decision so that when you do get the pushback like you're gonna get because I'm getting it um, that you can just you can just shrug your shoulders and go drink a cup of coffee and get on with the work that needs to be done you know what I'm saying so those those are the final thoughts for the day Just so you guys know, for the authors, the people over at geekbraindump.com that, that are writing for us, of course, Geek Brain Dump, you know, we've got like, what do we have? We have like 530 posts now from like 120 plus authors. One of the things we try to do for the authors is get freebies, free stuff. And so Carbonite has actually given us five licenses, free licenses for one year for their service. So the mass email went out today. Uh, if, you, if you haven't responded to that and you want one of the free licenses, please make sure to email reviews at uh, geekbraindump.com to try to get that. That is only available today, whatever today's date is. I, I don't know what today's date. But 
But, uh, but if you're watching this in the future, it's already gone. But if you're watching this in almost real time, take a look. We do have a Carbonite. Again, geekbraindump.com keeps growing and growing and growing. And if you want to meet people in person, the Geek Brain Dump meetup is, is growing too. We've got 84 geeks that are now members with 23 people, hopefully coming to our first shindig. Um, I am trying to work with people right now to actually get a restaurant together for the shindig. So hopefully I'm thinking in about two weeks weeks. My hope, we'll see how it goes. My hope is to do the first thing in about two weeks. But again, I'm very excited about this. Geek brain dump is going into the real world and I think it's going to be a cool thing.